Hey guys, Jeremy here from Level Up Roadcraft in Katoomba. I hope you're staying safe and I hope you're doing your hours. Today, we need to talk about dealing with police because there has been quite a few little updates in the laws and how things go and uh, you guys have asked for this. I've actually recorded this video like eight times and I've never been happy with it. Um, but I think, I think I can say it all on this video. First and foremost, as of August the 1st, 2021, the roadside speed traps, they're the RAV4s, the Utes, the cars that sit on the side of the road, the automatic speed cameras, um, they are now ticketing you for one kilometer an hour over and more. So in the, in the traditional sense, police would do a speed check on you and then they pull you over if you were speeding. Now, most police officers are never gonna give a damn about two or three kilometers an hour, right? Even up to about five, given certain circumstances. So if you're at the bottom of a hill or something like that, um, they're, they're not really gonna care, right? They don't really, it's not worth their time. It's not really a stress as far as they're concerned. They're going after the people who are 10 or 20 over the limit most of the time. But you've got to understand that that's a police officer. Now, my, just to be very clear, my point of view, and this is just my personal point of view, I don't mind a police officer sitting on the highway, running his radar gun, um, scanning someone when he sees someone, he or she sees someone speeding, they pull out, they engage them, they pull them over, they say, you are going too fast, they write them a ticket, and, uh, and then it's all done. So that person who was speeding is told that they were speeding and is told to slow down. So there's an instant change of behavior possibility when it's a police officer. When we have the roadside speed cameras, um, you could drive right through one of them and keep driving and drive through another one and you wouldn't even know that you've been speeding. You might not have seen the, the, the speed sign and next thing you know, you're copping two or three tickets because you thought that it was a 90 zone. Turns out it was a 70 zone because you just happen to not see the speed sign. Ignorance is no excuse, but you know, it's one of those things that uh, I, I disagree with the, I don't think mobile speed traps actually do anything. I think police with the radar do, I think that has a good impact. Um, I think fixed speed cameras help black spots to a degree. Um, but the argument of revenue raising, I think really not, the mobile speed traps are just revenue raising. So anyway, one kilometer an hour over. Remember on your L's, you have no points. Remember on your red P's, you have no ability to be done speeding. So please people, keep it under the speed limit to keep protecting your license the rms is open and closed like a freaking door on a windy day at the moment so if you make anything goes wrong you may not be able to get back in for another test or whatever else so please protect your investment of your driving and your education please make sure that you stay under the speed limit second thing New highway patrols from Sydney. There's a handful of highway patrols. You're going to see a dome on top of them. They're like a little like security camera that sits on top. I was just talking to one of the highway patrol officers from down in uh, Penrith he was from, and he was telling me that that is now tied into the RMS traffic system. So uh, whether you agree with it or not, we now have social credit, facial recognition, plate recognition, all that kind of stuff is now in our standard highway patrol cars and they're watching you, okay? so. When I was young, when I was on my L's and P's, um, mobile phones didn't exist. We could get away with being a little silly occasionally, but the world's changed. You just don't have that luxury that I had when I was young. You know, I was able to learn and be a bit of a dumbass, and I didn't have severe consequences most of the time. Um, by the way, if you ever want to hear stories about like uh, how I learned and the tickets I've gotten, put a comment down below. Say, Jeremy, we want to hear your stories about your tickets because I've got some pretty interesting ticket stories, but I don't know if you guys are actually interested or not. Maybe you can learn from my mistakes. That would be good. Next thing, um, the mobile, spo this mobile speed traps, the cameras on the side of the road don't actually have to put out signs. So really, you've got to be looking up ahead. When I say look ahead, scan the road up ahead, you know, <laughs> My argument a lot of the time with highway patrol is that if you're not much over the limit and you're looking all the way up the road, you see them before they get their finger on the button to scan your speed. So most of the time you should be able to reduce your speed and deal with them before they even get a scan on you. Um, those speed traps, those mobile speed cameras, they, I've seen them hiding in bushes and all sorts of stuff. I've got lots of footage. We've got some dogs over here that are trying to say hello. So, hello dogs. Hi, I'm, I'm trying to do a video. Can I talk to my students? You, you're talking too much. Yeah, good, all right, they're good. All right, so, um, and now third of all, dealing with police. So, look, in my experience, and I've probably been pulled over a hundred times, um, sometimes I was in the wrong, sometimes it was just RBTs, but I've probably been pulled over probably a hundred times or more. In a hundred traffic stops, I've had one bad incident, just one, 
I had one really bad incident where a guy decided to pick me up off my motorcycle and uh, and it was horrible. Um, it left me nervous around police for several years when I was young. And uh, But that's it. 99% of the time, I've never had a problem with them. Um, I, from my point of view, I think, first of all, is police react better if you smile and if you're calm, all right? Um, you gotta remember, police have to pull people out of car accidents. Oh, my arm's getting tired. They gotta pull people out of, you know, just police deal with people on the worst days. You don't call the cops when you're having a good day, if you know what I mean. So they really deal with a lot of shit. Um, and you know, if they pull you up and you're smiling and you're polite and you know, you're, you're reasonably friendly, I think the interaction always goes better. This is just my personal advice. I can't really give you any advice as a driving instructor. Um, this is just me sharing my experience. I think being smiling, being polite, staying calm, uh, I, has always gotten me a better outcome than any time I've ever been stressed. Every nightmare story I've ever heard, someone was either jacked with, ins with anxiety, like insane anxiety, or the cop was jacked with anxiety or stress. Um, I think most of the time, you know, if you do something wrong, cop it on the chin. You know, I've, I've had tickets in my life where I've been pulled up, I pulled over and the cop's like, you were doing this. And I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry. You know, no argument, no nothing. I just copped it because I had the points and it was worthwhile copying it. I learned my lesson. I changed my behavior. So I think a lot of the time that's the case. Now, when it comes to a traffic stop, there is some interesting stuff. You do have to give, just so you understand, when you get pulled over, so when someone lights you up, don't just pull over anywhere. Pull over somewhere safe. That cop's got to get out of the car and walk up to your car, all right? So pull over safely. Like, if you've just got to travel another, you know, 50, 100 meters down the road, you know, put your hand up, acknowledge the police officer, put your indicator on, just pull up somewhere where it's safe and pull over enough that that police officer can get out of the car and walk up to your car without being run down by a truck, all right? Because as I said, if everyone's calm in the interaction, you got a better, you got a better start to the, to the game, right? Now, you have to give them your name, your address, you have to show them your license. And, uh, and nowadays with the COVID thing, depending on what day it is and what state you're in, you've got to tell them where you started, where you're coming from or where you're going. Now, people may argue that, you know, oh, you don't have to according to this law or that law. Again, do you really want to start a confrontation with someone who just may be checking? Um, you know, I'm not a proponent of you got if you're doing nothing wrong there's nothing to be worried about you know i do i do think privacy is an important thing um, but at the same time if you're on a roadside stop and that and you're not doing anything wrong and that police officer is like where are you coming from where are you going oh you know i'm coming from home I'm going to the shops i'm doing my food shopping which i need to do if you're just relaxed calm you know show me your license here it is you know, here's an rbt off you go it, it, it normally just shortens it down right and and while as I said, while a very small percentage of very bad police make the media a lot of the time, most cops are pretty chill. You know, I was actually just talking to a highway patrol officer and, uh, you know, we were just talking back and forth. I think, I think a lot of them, you know, they realize that we're humans, humans make mistakes. And as I said, they see us on our bad days. So first and foremost, get prepared to tell them your name, where you're coming from, you know, where you're going in the modern COVID era, sadly. And, uh, and, and just answer you know, any simple questions. However, there is one thing I will say, is that not all police are good. And sometimes the bad ones will want you to self-incriminate. You know? So sometimes they'll, they'll pull you up and they'll say, hey, do you know why I'm pulling you over today? Now, I cannot even tell you how many tickets, I can't get numbers on this, but I'm sure it would be amazing. How many tickets get written to people because they go, oh yeah, I was doing 20 over the limit. Sweet. Police officer can write your ticket on the spot. You know what the evidence is? Self-admission. So uh, I whilst, you know, you give the police officer your name and your address and your license details and things like that. Self-incrimination is probably not the best way to go as well. So, you know, be smiley, be friendly, be relaxed. Identify yourself for the police officer so they can know who you are and run a quick check to make sure you don't have any warrants and everything else out for you. And then after that, you know, if they say, do you know why I'm pulling you over? You may know, but maybe it's not the best thing to say. You know, it's really up to you. What I'm doing is I've actually talked to a traffic lawyer because of the lockdown. I can't quite get her in the studio. So it's a little tricky at the moment, but I might be able to get her on the phone and do a bit of an interview over the phone. If you want me to talk to a traffic lawyer about this stuff, again, put it in the comments down below. But, um, but basically, you know, if someone, if a police officer ever said to me, do you know why I pulled you over today? Most of the time I'd just be like, RBT? I don't know. I, wasn't, I didn't think I was doing anything wrong. You know, I'm just guessing you're just doing an RBT. Now there's a reason why I'd say that because 
that gives them an interaction. You know, the cop can just go, oh yeah, cool, RBT, no worries, give me your license. They go back to the car, they run your license, they come back from the car with an RBT, count to 10, you should be blowing zero anyway. I mean, you learners and people players, everyone should be blowing zero anyway on the road most of the time. Um, should be blowing zero, it should be nice and easy, and they should go, right, just, you know, take it easy or whatever, and send you on your way. Um, but realistically, I just really want to get this through to you that I cannot stress enough, relax. Sometimes a police officer will pull you over because you have a flat tire and you don't know. Sometimes a police officer could be pulling you over because of a problem you're unaware of. So stay relaxed. You're not, you know, I mean, it, it doesn't help getting all wound up. Second of all, be polite. They've got a job to do, all right? Look, they want to do their job as easy. They're like you. You go to work, you just, you know, if you serve a customer, if you deal with people, you just want the interaction to be as simple and straightforward as possible. You don't want complications. You want your job to be easy. Well, guess what? Cops are the same. They want their job to be easy. You know, if you just help facilitate them, checking out who you are, making sure your car's all good on the regos and the insurances, you know, they're, when they pull you up, they do check your car out. So when a highway patrol officer pulls you over, they are gonna walk up to your car. They're gonna be looking at your tires and things like that. And you might have a tire that's getting bald, you know? Like your tires are the only thing that holds you to the ground, man. Just don't, don't cheap out on your tires. It's really, really important in order to actually make sure that you spend your money on your tires. It's the only part of your car that touches the road and your brakes, right? All these things are important. Everyone always forgets them. So they could check your tires and bust you for that. Look, at the end of the day, if you didn't do maintenance on your car, they're just doing their job. And you might think, oh, stupid cop giving me a ticket for my tires being a little low. But then again, maybe that cop forces you to get new tires and maybe a couple of days later, it's a little bit icy because we're coming through winter on the mountain and maybe that's the difference between you sliding off the edge of a corner and not. So, you know, they're just trying to keep you safe. They're trying to do all these bits and pieces. So stay calm, stay relaxed, be polite, identify yourself of who you are, all the all my neighbors are all driving past. I'm gonna say hello to everyone. Um, be polite and avoid self-incriminating is my advice, you know? I mean, if you're really dumb and doing something stupid, what are you doing, you know what I mean? Like, the roads are not racetracks. Just take your time, enjoy, relax, get to wherever you're going in a nice, calm, passive fashion, you know? We don't need to be racing everywhere. You Sydney drivers always drive up across the mountain. And I can tell who you are from Sydney because you drive like freaking maniacs, man. You're all following one second off each other's asses and jumping, you know, you, you barely indicate when you change lanes and you're 20 over the bloody limit. It's like, well, out in regional areas, man, we're all relaxed. We know where you can go faster because there's no cops and the roads are nice and open and we know where you've got to look after yourself, you know? Remember, when you're traveling somewhere you're not used to, pay attention to what the locals are doing. They probably know where more things are than you do. So again, stay calm, relax. Now, if you get pulled into an, uh, an RBT, you know, like a police RBT thing, just remember, you know, when you're pulling in, slow down. Make sure you avoid any of the police officers who are flagging you in and make sure you just remember, as I said, it's all about starting the interaction calm, starting the interaction with a smile, being relaxed. And remember that cop is probably most likely percentage-wise not one of the dickheads you see on TV. That cop's probably a chilled out, man or woman who's just doing their job, you know? And, and, and most of them just wanna help society, you know? It's their job and they're just trying to do what they do. So try and facilitate a calm, relaxed, easy interaction. It's not worth fighting a lot of stuff. Sometimes it's just worthwhile, you know, giving what they need, but at the same time, avoid the self-incrimination, you know? Um, look, I found, <laughs> Things have changed in my lifetime, 20 years. So, you know, if you want, as I say, if you want to hear the stories of my tickets, put it down below. I'll start doing some videos about my tickets. I'll think of something to do. Um, but most importantly, just remember, a good interaction, you'll be pulled over. It will take all of about two minutes. You know, turn the car off, by the way. When the cop pulls you over and you pull over the side of the road, turn the car off. You know why? Because the cop knows you're not going to run if the car's turned off. And if the cop knows you're not going to run, they're going to be more relaxed. So it's all just about this thought, just, just think through these things, you know, yeah, yes, given the current crisis, you know, with the health stuff going on, yeah, there's some, arguably, there's some freedoms and some rights that are being compromised in this country. That's an entire another discussion. It's, it's you know, that, that's, a, as I said, that's a whole another discussion. But at the end of the day, things are changing. And as things are changing, what's most important that we do is that we look after ourselves on the road, okay? So keep it calm, keep it smiley. Anyway, guys, I hope you're staying safe. I hope you're doing your hours. Remember, until next time, stay calm, pay attention to keep safe. I'm Jeremy from Level Up Roadcraft in Katoomba, and bye for now.